Okay, here's the new printed circuit board. At first glance, it's uh, very similar to the other one, to the one that has been damaged. Um, I won't go through all of the details about it, but I will point out a couple of things that I think of are interesting. And those are on the other side of the board. You can see still these are the two wires which bring the power in. And there's the same diode that protect against uh, reverse polarity connections. But some of the rest of this is missing over here. In fact, that little thing that I told you that was a voltage regulator that was right there is gone. It's been replaced by a surface mount component, which is much different from the one that was there. Uh, this one is made to handle more power, uh, probably much more resilient to those voltage surges that uh, presumably damage the other one. So that sort of supports my opinion that the other one, the reason the other one was damaged by a voltage surge was because it was poorly designed and whoever designed it should have been more familiar with uh, DC voltages in automobiles and other motorized vehicles and know that voltage surges are very common. So my guess is that changing from that other uh, regulator to this one may well have solved the problem. But I have another idea that I'm going to incorporate that will further protect this board from facing the same fate that the other board succumbed to. Okay, this is yet another printed circuit board that I want to show you. This is what's called a buck regulator. Buck meaning it reduces the voltage. It takes a certain voltage in on this side, two wires, positive, negative, and this device, which is the actually actual regulator itself, regulates the incoming voltage down to a voltage that you select to have to come out over here. And you select it by adjusting that little tiny brass screw right there. And I don't remember the specifications in detail off the top of my head, uh, but I'll put a link to this part so you can read them for yourself. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my fan power supply. It should be really easy. All I have to do is take the wires that come from the converter and attach them here and then attach the two wires that go to the printed circuit board there. But before I do that, I will have adjusted this regulator so that no matter what the voltage is coming in here, the voltage coming out here will never exceed 12 volts. So that should solve the problem. So if there's a surge over here, this is 12 volts. If there's not a surge over here, this is still 12 volts. Should preclude the possibility of additional damage like I've just had to pay $40 in a few hours of work to repair. Well, I have now put in the new printed circuit board. I put it in in the reverse order of how I took it out, which is the first thing I did was connect the ribbon cable to the bottom side of the board. The second thing I did was connect this little two conductor cable to the top of the board right there. And uh, then I put the three screws in, remembering to put a nylon washer under the head of each of the three screws. Be careful not to over tighten those screws. Remember you are driving them down into plastic so just snug them up. Don't, uh, don't take a chance on breaking the uh, boss or uh, stripping out the threads. Oh man, by the way I did wash this uh, plastic housing uh, while I had it all apart and uh, get all the dust and cobwebs and so forth out of that. Here's a look at the final wiring assembly. I'll trace the wires around for you. Starting here, these are the two wires that will connect to the power wires in the travel trailer. Uh, I have a little dot of hot glue there tidying them down so that they don't flop around when I'm trying to uh, install this back into the fan housing. Then the pair of wires go here to the input to the uh, outboard uh, voltage regulator. Uh, 13 or 14 volts will come in here. It'll be regulated by this device down to 12 volts here. I've used this screw here to adjust it to exactly 12 volts. 
then I put a drop of hot glue there so that somebody won't uh, decide to put a screwdriver in there and change the uh, voltage output and not know what they're doing. Then the 12 volt comes out. I left a little loop of wire here in case I need some slack for some purpose later on. It, that comes around, goes to the input to the control board. Uh, it's uh, switched then back out here to control the fan, both the speed and the direction. And uh, it's also regulated down here to power the microcontroller. So that's uh, pretty well the way it's going to work. I'll get back with you when I've got more done. Well, we've had another change of plans. I uh, finished reassembling the fan controls, and I decided before I put it in, I'd put it on the bench and test it again. When I did, I discovered that the symptoms uh, were exactly unchanged. That was with the new control board, and yet the problem still existed according to my bench test. So I called tech support at maxair.com back again, and they said, well, uh, probably there's only one other thing it could be, and that is the control panel, or the, the switch panel. So I said, well, what do I do about that? They said, we'll send you a new one, because you've already had a lot of trouble. You've already bought a, a new control board, and so we'll send you a switch panel for your charge. So I peeled the old one off. It's just stuck on there with some 3M cement. This is the new one, by the way. So I peeled the old one off and I took some lighter fluid and cleaned the residue off of uh, this surface so that when I peel the label off here and stick this one down it will uh, adhere pretty well. After I use some lighter fluid to clean that off then I use some isopropyl alcohol to remove any remaining oily residue. So I should be able to stick this on there, put it back on the bench and test it and then I'll report back to you in the next section of the video and tell you whether or not the control panel fixed the problem. The control panel seems to operate as, as I think it should, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you. And I just put a, a portable uh, audio recorder down so that you can hear the beeps as I press the buttons. Now the first thing I have to do is connect power uh, to the board itself. And remember that the plus goes to the black wire and the ground is the white wire. That's kind of unusual, but remember that's the way it works. Plus to the black wire and ground to the white wire. Now I'm going to turn on power. You heard one beep. That's when I applied power to the unit for the first time. Now I'm going to uh, operate the on-off switch right here. And you hear a beep when it comes on. And if I press it again, that turns the power off and you can hear those beeps. Now here's something that I really want you to watch. Uh, I can also turn the thing on by pressing the auto switch. I get three beeps and this green LED lights. Now what the auto switch does is it automatically turns the fan on and off based on this uh, temperature sensor that I showed you in an earlier section of the video. And it comes from the factory set to 78 degrees. So if the temperature exceeds 78 degrees Fahrenheit, it will turn the fan on to start pulling air out or in, whichever way you have it set. And then once the temperature goes back down below 78 degrees, it automatically turns the fan off. You can adjust that temperature with these two switches right here. You do have to count as you press the buttons to know where you're setting it. So for example, if I want to change it to seven, from 78 to 80, I would press the plus button twice. Once, twice. Now it's set to 80 degrees instead of 78. If I wanted it to be set to, say, 76 degrees, I would have to remember I'm already set at 80, so I, now I need to go down four degrees. So I'd press the minus button four times. Now I'm set at 76 degrees. Well, uh, you might ask, well, golly, that seems confusing. Uh, what if I don't remember what I have it set to? Well, you can always turn it off, and that resets it to 78 degrees. So the next time you press this button and turn the auto function on, it's back at 78 degrees. All right, I'm going to turn that off by pressing the off button. Now, the fan is off. The auto uh, feature is off, so 
let's assume that I want to just turn the fan on and use it manually. I would press the on button. Okay, now here's something you really need to listen close for. I'm going to press the in and out switch and I want you to listen very closely. I'm going to be quiet while I do it. I'm going to press it four times. Did you hear something besides the beep? Did you hear a little ping sound? That's the sound of the relay operating that reverses the direction of the motor. So the only time that does that is when the unit is turned on. If I turn the unit off, then I press this button and nothing will happen. No beep, no ping, no nothing. Only when I have it set to on, can I change the direction of the airflow from in to out or from out to in by pressing this button. Hear the little ping as the relay operates? Actually the ping is when it's releasing. You, It's very hard to hear when it operates, but it operates like that and it releases with a little ping. Pretty nice feature. Now these buttons also control the speed of the motor. If you do not have the auto switch on, but the unit is turned on, you can use these buttons to increase or decrease the speed of the motor. You will also hear beeps every time you press the button. And if the fan was running, you would see it in and hear it increasing in speed. To decrease the speed, go the other way. I'm going to turn the whole thing off again. Now I haven't actually put this back in my trailer. I haven't had the fan motor hooked up to it, but I'm so convinced by the operation of the control board and by some voltages that I've measured that it's going to work. I really believe everything is fixed. So I'm going to go back, put it in the trailer, and I'll test it one more time to make sure that it's operating as I think it should, but I have 90 plus percent confidence that everything is repaired. The installation of the fan was a little bit of trouble. Uh, I was working by myself and there were some things that needed an extra hand or two, but I did manage to get it all put back together and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I'll do a quick demo here to show you that everything is uh, working as it should be. I hope I have the camera pointed uh, where it's supposed to be. Uh, first of all, let's start with the on-off switch. As you can see and hear, that's working just fine. Now we'll change the direction. Fan slows to a stop. And then starts turning the other way. So that's working just as it should. Now we'll change the speed of the fan, slow it down a couple of bumps. You can probably hear the change in speed. Speed it back up. So that's working well. We'll turn it off. Now we'll try the auto switch. You can see that it has turned on auto. You heard the three beeps. You see the green LED. And the fan is not turning because it's pretty chilly here in the travel trailer. And it's nowhere near the 78 degrees uh, that it would take to turn the fan on. So if you remember correctly, the way we turn off the auto function is to simply turn the whole fan off. So that seems to be working just fine. The installation looks good. I did take the opportunity to clean the fan and the, the trim ring. Uh, it's all pretty clean now. I cleaned the screen. I'd still need to clean the inside of the cover, but I'll have to do that. Uh, from the outside of the trailer by taking the uh, translucent cover off. I'm happy. It has taken the better part of two weeks between uh, doing the work and filming 
some and also waiting for parts. The uh, control board, which it turns out that I didn't have to have, took a week to get here. And then the replacement control panel uh, took a couple or three days. It was actually shipped very quickly from maxair.com and was delivered quickly, but it was on my front porch and I didn't realize where it was. It was delivered on Tuesday and I didn't find it until Thursday. Uh, today is Friday and the job is done. The wire that is included uh, in the fan is 16 gauge. The wire that is in the trailer that was pre-wired in the trailer to supply electricity to the, to the fan is also 16 gauge, but it has a much thicker insulation. However, a 16 gauge butt splice worked just fine. Uh, and that's what I put the wires together with. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember, I'm not Chuck. GoPro, stop recording.